Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, I used to love fighting as a kid. Uh, just, I think what happened to me as a child it ch changed my life. I was always fighting, never stopped fighting. And then I decided to go down a club called Pride View Centre uh, where I used to do weights and had a bag there that was really, really old and soft as anything. So I was just smashed that about a bit. And then um, I thought I might move on a bit and I went down to a uh, foot market and I got a job down there and I met a guy called Colin Cracknell and uh, Colin Cracknell introduced me to his club. He had a club in Southall, yeah? And I was going down there, Harry Holland, uh, Colin Cracknell and I was just sparring with Colin and Harry, you know? And I was getting better and better and better and being in the foot market, uh, Martin Wurzold, Derek Pierce, loads of fighters in there, Terry Woods, all my pals, uh, Colin Cracknell, they used to teach me how to fight. So I become better and better and better. And uh, I loved it. I loved the gun. And then, you know, get put in prison. But before that, um, I used to go down and the transport. I used to box down there with a guy called George Whelan, Brian Whelan. And because I was get up and coming uh, and I could hold my own, I was really knocking everybody out in the, in, in the, in the club, in the, in in, in um, London Transport. So George really asked me, do I want to go down to Fogy and start training down there? So I said, yeah. So we go down Haverstock Hill with the Noble Art, uh, which is a border from Charles Gym, and it was run by a guy called Joe Devitt. And Joe Devitt, our boy, good fight these days, Joe. I uh, like Joe, he's, he, he used to talk to him, teach you a lot, you know, Joe. And anyway, um, go down there and train nearly every, every weekend, like Sundays, Saturdays, Sundays, uh, always in the morning. Go down there also with a guy called Fowl McGrew, a power of mine, big heavyweight, open class. Uh, me and him used to spar all the time. I was to spar with uh, Billy Ed quite a lot. Uh, Bill taught me a lot. And also Joe Bugner. I've had a few rounds of him, but Joe took a little bit liberty with me sometimes, but that's part of, that's part of learning, the, learning the game, yeah? And when I was there, I met a guy called John L. Gardner. Uh, John L. Gardner, fantastic, mate. Um, so fit, amateur, open class, not foul. Um, John had so many sponsors. They used to come in there four or five at a time. Big sponsors loved Love John O'Gardner. That means John didn't have to work. He was getting money from these people. But he was just a good, good fighter. Fit. I mean, he was, he was just doing 10 rounds in the bag, 10 threes, uh, no problem. On the pads, getting a ring spa around with Billy Ed. And Joe, and, and it, it was he was really, really good. So he knew that he was gonna go a long way. Uh, I can't blame myself for that. I had no sponsors, doesn't make excuses. Uh, then one day a mate of mine called Leslie McIntyre, uh, Sinclair Christie, comes up to me and says, listen, um, so I'm down the Wellington Highgate with Georgie Francis and Mickey Duff. I mean, okay. He said, come down and have a, have a bit of a workout down there, you know. And so I asked Georgie Wheel and George Wheel wasn't too happy about it. But I went down there and and had John Conti and Bunny Stewart. They've got some good fighters down there, yeah. And I wasn't fighting, I'd get in a ring and spar with them all, you know what I mean? I wasn't fighting. I didn't give them no respect as what they should have got, yeah? But I didn't. Because of that, um, I should let my, my punches go. And it, I didn't hold them back. And uh, George Francis got me one day, Mickey Dark, and said, look, uh, we're interested in you turning professional. Are you interested? I said, yeah, that's what I'd love to do. He said, right, we're gonna come and meet you. And it was a Sunday. Um, I got involved with a girl and never turned up, went around my house, Mickey Dove and, 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 and uh, George Francis. And I ruined it. I really ruined it, you know. And because of that, being an idiot, uh, they they went, okay. And she just didn't give me another chance, the opportunity, because I didn't go back down the gym. I was too embarrassed. So I started earning money thieving. And, you know, I was getting good money then, get put away. As a, in a ball stall, and then get put away as a YP, and then goes on and on and on, but I was always fighting. So when eventually um, I come out of prison, I uh, come out of Chelsea prison, I decided, because whilst I was in Chelsea prison, Jimmy Chips was there, one of the benders, all them people, loads of people, but I've had a few fights in there, 
And one day I was on a visit with Ronnie Bender, and his brother was there, Ray Bender, and a guy called Alex Steen. And you know, I didn't really know who they were at that time. But as I was sitting there, Ronnie Bender came up, come up and said, look, we come over and have a chat. So I said, my mum would be two minutes, mum. So I walked over there and Alex Steen shook my hand, Ray Bender. He said, have you, have you ever been interested in turning professional? I mean, I've always been interested, yeah, but I said, because, anyway, uh, well, when I come out, I didn't really say too much on a visit. When I come out, I met them, yeah, Ray Bender and Alex Steen. And they said to me, look, um, you know, what about training professional? As we said, I said, look, it's going to be quite hard for me, yeah, because all the sentences I've ever done have always been for armed robberies, uh, GBH for intent, Section 18, with, on police officers and all that. I says, I'm not gonna get a license. I said, but the only thing is my name's Ray Hill, but my real name is Ray Rollins. My stepfather, when he married my mum, never changed his depot to Rollins, but I've always been Hill, my dad's name, my stepfather, but my real name's Rollins. He said, okay, we're trying to do it, but they couldn't do it, you know, anyway. So obviously I never got to turn professional. So uh, then uh, I moved to Lewisham and one day I went down the pub. I was training, I was running in Lewisham. I was also over, over at Blackheath and Woolwich and, and all the pubs, just running everywhere, yeah. And uh, one day I went down, down the pub, met Eddie Richardson, talking to Eddie, and you know, and we were talking about boxing and all that. And he said, look, you know, why don't you go down the Beckett? So I went down the Beckett, um, to meet a guy called Jimmy Tibbet. Went down there, I met Jimmy Tibbet. He did some training some people. I was boxing. I was on the bag. Came up to me, he said, oh, my name's Jimmy Tibbet. I said, yeah. Anyway, got to know him. And uh, I used to go down there regular. I run regular. Uh, always running. I love running. You know, big boots on, a pack on the back and all that. It just really, really fit. Five mile, 10 mile. I used to love it all around Blackheath. Everywhere, yeah, Woolies, Derrick, everywhere, I was the one. And so Jimmy Tillett said to me, what, you know, was down here one day, and uh, Roy Shaw was there, and Roy Shaw had a few rounds with Columbo, and asked me if I'd like to get in. So I, I got in, and, and, uh, and Roy Shaw threw some punches with my brother Bobby. Roy Shaw threw, 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 threw some good punches at me, and what, you know, it, it, so it was stopped, you know what I mean? But it didn't hurt me as such, yeah. He hurt me, but not as slightly six big six minute anyway. So after a while, I got to spar more with Roy, and then then I become the one that was hitting Roy, Danny Roy, yeah. And I had a few rounds with Colombo, a few rounds with uh, Lloyd Waltham, and then one day I was down there, and the guy, this guy, got in the ring, and it was a guy called Les Stevens, uh, a gypsy, yeah, and a good heavyweight mate. Les and asked me a lot of getting around the ring with him, so I got in the ring and uh, he taught me a lot, Les. He taught me a lot, me being open, the way I was open and all that. And yeah, he taught me quite a good fight, Les. And then I thought to myself, anyway, I started having uh, unlicensed fights and I won two and uh, went down the rainbow. I was fighting down the rainbow by a guy called Brian Hall. And it's a box on, uh, the video box on with Frankie Warren, you know. So a box by and all, and we can become a draw. Then I met Lenny McLean, and me and Lenny had words, and um, I heard so much about Lenny McLean. Lenny McLean at that time was up and coming. You know, he wasn't a big name as such then, but he was still a name up and coming because of because of Frankie Warren. And uh, they're cousins, uh, and so Frankie Warren and Lenny McLean was always together. Frankie Warren made Lenny, and Lenny made Frankie Warren with Vic Andretti, yeah? And then I was just go down to the pub and, and spar with Lenny McLean. And yeah, I held my, held my own, yeah? And uh, then I used to have more fights, really more fights. And all of a sudden, one day, um, I got to hear um, about Lenny McLean fighting a guy called Paul Sykes at the Rainbow, yeah? So, me and Jimmy Tibbet, uh, Terry Coombs, Terry Sharp, and a few other people decided to go there and watch him. 
uh, bought the tickets, but it never happened. Uh, evidently, uh, Paul Shites had a fight uh, in a pub or bar or wherever and cut his eye. I've got a lot of respect for Paul Shites because Paul Shites is similar to, to me in lots of ways. Always been in prison, uh, loves his weights, strong as anything. And he was always fighting in prison and he didn't care for no one. And also, which is not like me, Paul Sykes is very educated. Educated in a way that he's been in prison such a long time. He could read, he could write, yeah. But he used to read books all the time, so he's educated himself. Because he used to talk the way he used to talk, people thought, thought it was quite simple, like me, you know. But I was simple because I did, I was, I, I had to do, um, you know, I was very dyslexic. I couldn't read, couldn't write. But he, Paul Sykes, learned a lot in prison. So he was very intelligent. You know, he couldn't have it over, over him. He was really clever. But he'd done a lot of bird, like me. I, was, I loved Paul Sykes. I just loved the way he talked about him. So when he was going to fight, um, when he was going to fight um, Lenny, you know, and I thought, oh, wow, well, I don't know. But I'd also... Um, heard about him when he fought John O'Garden, not Wembley, uh, you know, and uh, John O'Garden stopped him in the sixth round. Well, you know, someone told me this and said that, he turned his back at him, but I didn't believe it. But anyway, forget, forget that for a minute. And anyway, so um, we, go, we got the tickets, it's cancelled. Well, fair play, it's cancelled, is what it is. It happens all the time to fighters. So then Lenny, um, because it's a, a big show, it's a big show, um, he fights a guy called Kevin Paddock as a, as a substitute. Kevin Paddock is a, a guy that was a middleweight, about five foot eight, something like that, but blow up to a heavyweight, a uh, better good fighter, a good professional fighter. But, the trouble with Lenny that he always act, he's always winds up fighting professional fighters. So professional fighters are just know the ring inside out. You know, it's you know they they're just different class to unlicensed fighters really in a way. Even though unlicensed, you've got a lot of unlicensed fighters that are ex professionals. So anyway, it gets to the ring with Kevin Paddock, and Kevin Paddock he beat, beats him. Easy, he really beats Lenny easy. So because of that, um, I went to him. I said, "Well, he had no chance with he had no chance with Paul Sykes. Paul Sykes would have bashed him up terrible." Um, I fancy me, Jimmy Tibbet, all that lot, Terry Crimson, all that lot. Was said Paul Sykes would beat Lenny within two rounds, three rounds, possibly stop him, knock him out. Yeah, because of Paul Sykes who he is and what he was. And then uh, I said, well, Paul Sykes fought John O. Gardner, you know, and John O. Gardner, anyway. But John O. Gardner um, stopped Paul Sykes. And anyway, uh, and anyway, so he fought um, Kevin Paddock. Kevin Paddock beat him easy. And then I was fighting and I was knocking people out and I couldn't get no fights. And one day, uh, Jimmy Tibbet came up to me and said, listen, I've got a guy called Kevin Paddock. I said, it's the son of Kevin Paddock that beat Len. He said, yeah, it is, yeah. He said, you want to fight him? I went, yeah, of course. Anybody fights Len and beats Lenny, I want to fight, you know, because it makes me feel better. So we, we, we thought, I thought it was a cat's whisk because Stretton beat it. it was his place in Guildford or Ilford. Ilford Palais, it could have been, yeah. So it goes there, meets his Sid Paddock, Kevin Paddock, whatever, and Kevin Paddock's short, Stocky little guy, and uh, he's, you can see by his face, he's, he's a right odd nut, you know what I mean? Get in the ring, uh, me and him have eight rounds, ten rounds, not quite sure, but we smash each other to pieces. Um, Kevin Paddock came up to me about the seventh round, said to me, come on, we got to start fighting, and I've been really fighting. So I went, you know, he made me bottle go a little bit, but, you know, and then... We just went mad at each other, throwing punches like it's going out of fashion. Um, it can take a punch, because I can bang you. Yeah? And he was giving me grief. He was really punching me all around the gaff, same with me. 
and it become a draw. So I was excited with that, that it, it become a draw because he beat Lenny quite easy. It was a unanimous decision, he beat Lenny quite easy, mate. Anyway, so um, then I went, yes, you know what I mean? So then um, Jimmy Tillett said, listen, um, that's good what you just done there, right? You know what I mean? That's really, really good. Because like now everybody uh, wants to will want to fight you, you know, and because they want that. So you know, I started getting more fights, and I started winning more fights. And then this came up to me one day, and he said, "Look, um, we've got a guy called Sid Paddock, Kevin Paddock's brother. He is a heavyweight. He is a, a natural heavyweight. Uh, do you fancy fighting him?" So I looked him up. Yeah, of course I do. I'm going to fight him. And me and him met. Uh, you know. Good looking guy, but a good fighter, mate. Got in the ring, me and him had eight rounds, 10 rounds, I'm quite sure. Uh, and also that become a draw. But Sid really hurt me, right? And But I wouldn't go, I wouldn't hit, hit the floor. Uh, same with me, anyway, anyway, it become a draw. And then I'm now, I'm over the moon, you know, I'm, I've got Sid, Kevin, I'm going forward. Uh, then I couldn't get a fight, I wouldn't fight Lenny. Lenny wouldn't fight me. Uh, not Lenny, he might be Kevin, he might be the Frankie Warren or Vic Andretti, you don't know, but I never get to fight him. But when when uh, Paul Sykes, um, you know, the other day, on the other day, um, I watched Paul Sykes uh, when he fought Gardner, John Gardner. Paul Sykes, uh, big respect for Paul Sykes, mate. He come out um, and didn't give John Gardner no respect. He, Give it to John O'Gardner. And John O'Gardner, um, from old, I remember him from old. And that's why he became an open class in any term pro, because he was a pro he was a proper, proper hard man that always went forward and consistently, consistently threw punches and would not leave out. And he could he was very, very good at it, it, taking a taking a punch, even though he got knocked out in the first round by a big American. But he can't, he's very, he's a person that, if he, like, hit him first of the first couple of three rounds, you will not got the chance of winning, yeah? But anyway, uh, Paul Sykes caught him a good way and I think it was about the fourth round, but he win it, yeah? And then they give Paul Sykes a lot of grief. He punched Paul, Short, Paul Sykes all around the ring, but never knocked Paul Sykes to the floor. You know, fair play to Paul. And I think the referee was going to stop it in the fifth. You know, he walked over to Paul Sykes' corner and, and had a chat. Uh, Paul Sykes being Paul Sykes, he would never retire. He would never, ever give in like that. And that's why people say to me, uh, you know, and you hear about Paul Sykes turning his back on, on, uh, on the, but he never. When I see him in General Gardner, he didn't turn his back on him. He turned around, he turned around to the right, but he didn't turn his back and walk away. Even though he was going to get stopped by the ref, he wasn't returning any punches, he was going to get stopped, but he didn't turn his back on John O'Gardner, so he lost the fight. After that, he had about two more fights and then he went into the unlicensed fighting game. It's a shame that him and Lenny McLean never met. Um, he'd have beat Lenny easy, you know, he'd have beat him easy. Uh, Paul Sykes, good fighter, mate. Uh, and then, you know, it's like most, most of these fighters, most fighters, I don't know what it is. I'm one that's not like that, yeah? I'm a fighter that, that don't get into the drinks, even though I got into the drugs. It's maybe it's a lot different, you know? But, you know, we all get into something. And I got into the, I got into the drugs, not so much drink, and all the others got into drink. Pool sites, uh, build a bomb and they you know uh you've got cliff fields they all get into the drink and when they get into the drink they don't realize that they take liberties with people and then people think well you know it's going to come to the day when we're going to take liberties with you because you know you're, you're going too far and you're getting out of your nut and you won't be out you can't handle us and that's what happened to paul sites billy williams and cliff fields the drink takes over you become someone you ain't, and then you get bashed up. Um, Paul Sykes used to get bashed up regular in, in, in pubs, in clubs, and all that is a pain in the butt. 
Um, there was a rumour, whether or not it was a rumour, I don't know, that there was a, a guy called uh, Big Daddy, uh, big fat uh, wrestler, about six foot six, 30 stones, that they put him in a club because of Paul Sykes coming in, Paul, causing lots of problems. So they put Big Daddy in there to stop Paul Sykes, but I don't think Paul Sykes ever went back into that club no more. You know, but that's the rumours. Whether or not it's true, I don't know, yeah. But I had a lot of respects for Paul Sykes. Uh, I had a lot of respects for Lenny McLean, yeah. A lot of people are going to run me down this, you say that about Lenny, this about Lenny. But Lenny McLean, um, he got in the ring with a lot of mostly professional fighters. That's why he couldn't win. You can't win, you know, especially if you can't box. And then he couldn't box. He was a brawler, he was a fighter, and he couldn't box. And you've got fighters, professional fighters, that know the ring inside out, turn you around, and they think you've got no chance. So he got bashed up by professional fighters, got stopped, always got beat, yeah? But because of all that, um, him and Roy Shaw, they had a big name. They made unlicensed fighting. Forget about us. But Roy Shaw and Lenny McLean, they made the unlicensed game. They made it with with Frankie Warren. And because there was nothing, no medias and all that, no mobile phones, medias, no uh, no YouTube and TikTok and Instagrams and all that, they only had books. So because of who they were, they sold millions of books. They were millionaires, yeah. When Roy Shaw died and Lenny McLean died, they become millionaires overnight because of the book, the book sales, millions of books they sold, yeah. And fair play to them, mate, you know what I mean? And a big respect to them and big respect to Roy Shaw, anybody like that, you know. Uh, even Cliff Fields. Cliff Fields' books now are like unbelievable money, like 400 quid for a book and all that, you know, if you can get one, you know, but that's what happens, you know. Anyway, me, um, I was a fool. I got into more into the arm robbery game and hurting people. And then I did into what, what I was good at, fighting. And I was gutted, you know, because now um, I've got everything I want now, yeah? But I could have been better in my life. I could have been a fighter and, you know, a good fighter and maybe got in a British title you never know, European top, anything. I know that I was that good, yeah? I could have been someone. And I mucked it up, ruined it, because I thought arm oh, robberies and all that was a lot better life. But it's a silly life, because you lose everything. You go in prison, you lose it all. You lose a whole lot, mate. Mums, dads, brothers, sisters, relationships, you lose it. And you come out, you've got nothing, you know? But as I said, I'm lucky. I've got a book now. Uh, the book, by the way, it's, I think it's the 1st of April today. The book is going to come out this month, yeah? It's out this month. Um, everything's been done, more or less. There may be a few pictures, other pictures that have got to go in. Then it goes to the publisher, yeah? And then it's going to be done. Um, I've always said uh, it's going to be done this week, that week, that week, yeah? But it's going to be done in April. It's going to be done, mate. And I'm really excited. I want to read this book, mate, more than what you do. You know what I mean? Um, I have, I have, um, well, I'm not saying I have, I haven't yet, but I'm hoping a lot more to come out of this book. Um, people are going to be, you know, people won't believe it, mate. Uh, there's people out there that don't like me. You know what I mean? They're going to be, they, they, they won't believe this book. This book's so good, mate. It's, it's, it is the one, it is the top book. Anyway, um, and that's it. Uh, anyway, good morning to you all. Uh, I just thought I'd do a little bit like that. And uh, big respects to everybody I talk about. Yeah, nice one. Bye.